new member, you start hearing all these terminologies, CC, CL, DCP, and you're like, what the heck? I thought I was just joining Toastmasters. I, I thought I was just going to give speeches and practice. Well, there is, there are all these abbreviations because we have these goals. The reasons we set goals are the reasons why our boss sets goals. It's to give us something tangible to work with so that we can move forward and not stay stagnant or move backward. Having said that, let me try to inform you on another thing. When the officers went for our training, do you know that we did not know what our area was? They kept asking us, and we were like, we did not have a clue. So today I'm here to inform you that we are in Division M, Area 34, and if you can remember that club number, I want to talk to you, and, how, and you can tell me how you memorize all these. But for now, the main important area, uh, information I'd like to share with you is that we are in Division M, Area 34, and we do have a club number. If you ever need that club number, feel free to ask me. Let's start off with the basics, competent communicator. When we all join Toastmasters, I think most of us were joining for this reason. How do we become better speakers, better presenters? In order to become a better speaker, we're all familiar with practice makes perfect. Now, I've seen a lot of people speak, and they've given a lot of speeches. Are we ever perfect? No. Even if you ask what we feel are the best presenters in our group or in our company, they, would, they will dissect their speeches from the beginning to the end. They can find all kinds of things that they wish they had done better. Having said that, you would rather go listen to them speak than somebody who never practices. For the most part, we would rather go hear that person speak. That's progress, that's improvement, that's where we want to be. How we get there is by working on our goals and on our manuals are all kinds of goals, all kinds of objectives and pr projects that will get us there. That is our competent communicator book. I asked all of y'all to bring it today, and I didn't even bring mine. But if you look at them, there's a speech there to help you work on several different speeches that you're going to ask to be given at one time in your life. And if you just use your competent, commun competent communicator manual as a guide, it will get you there. As a group, what does that mean, competent communicator? Yes, you have the book. What else do you do? Do you just go with the book? When you join Toastmasters, they encourage you to get a mentor. And this is because you'll have a quick, familiar, easy way to get a reference, to get that extra support you need. Find someone that you think fits you or someone that you've seen deliver presentations, and maybe you can work with them to get where you want to be. Does that mean that that's the only person you go to? No, but it's just your point of contact. It gives you that connection, that familiarity. Anybody in the club can help you, but today I would like for you on your papers, before you leave here, just so you, that you already remember to put it down, I would like everybody to have a mentor. And you can ask the person ahead of time if you would like. If you already have a mentor, just put that name down. Or put a, two or three. If you're not sure and you want to ask one and you think one might back out, you can have a backup. I would just like for everyone to have a mentor. I think Art Luderman is probably the most enthusiastic mentor we have. And as far as I know, he has not put a cap on how many he's willing to take. So if, if y'all are worried, <laughs> worried about that, I don't be. Schedule your speeches ahead of time. It's OK if you're going to have to back out at the last minute. As long as you let the Toastmaster and myself, the Vice President of Education, know, that's OK. We can always work with that. But why do you have to schedule ahead of time? The same reason you have to schedule anything ahead of time. It's right there in front of you for you to work with. If you don't schedule it, you'll keep putting it off. How many agree with that? If you don't schedule it, you keep putting it off. You're more likely to meet that goal if you have it written down and if you have it scheduled. That's why we encourage that. But that does not mean that we don't understand that something's going to come up. You can always back out, but it'll help you as a tool to work towards that speech. Create speaking goals to have something concrete to work towards. Another thing, you, you could say, I think I'm going to do two speeches in a year. That's great. It's better than saying, well, I'll just wing it, see how many speeches I'm going to do in a year. Because the closer you get to two, the better you feel about yourself. And if you get to two, 
Nobody's going to tell you, oh, you can't do an exercise brief, you already met your goal. But you have something concrete again to work with other than how, how many speeches am I going to do? I don't know. Let me just wing it. Gives you something concrete to work towards. Commit to your goals. So I'm probably giving you ways out. Yeah, go ahead, try your best. But we understand you can't make it. The commitment comes from you. Whether you're going to do those speeches or whether you're going to keep putting them off. Again, I'm a firm believer that commitment also takes practice. We have the best of intentions. I don't think anybody comes here and says, you know what, I'm just going to show up. Or maybe I won't. I think we all came in here with the same reason, to keep on improving our speaking and presentation skills, and life gets in the way. But I think the more we practice at committing to our speeches, the better we become at actually delivering them. And I don't just mean presenting them, I mean actually delivering them from beginning to end, and then we come up and deliver them in front of everybody. That's why I think that that's important, to commit is also an active practice, to, to share that with you. Practice your speeches whenever you can. I think that most of us would love to practice our speeches before we come up here and give them. I know some of us are limited, but I'm here to tell you, I will actually, before I come in front of you, I will try my hardest to run that speech so many times in my head that sometimes I don't even hear people talking to me. I'll do it in the car, I do it in front of a mirror. Those are just some of my tips, but I think you have all yours. I remember one time my grandmother said, that the one thing she liked about me was I was in drama and I never knew that she would listen to me while I was in the room practicing my my part and I would just be in there and I would just be like if I was Cinderella I was doing my Cinderella role and she's like Mia it is just so it's so entertaining just to hear you she goes I like it when you're practicing well just try to remember when you were a kid and you used to do things like that so easy, just find the time, it's pretend. You'll be practicing, and so when you come up here, you'll find yourself stumbling less, and you'll find, you'll find your comfort zone. Competent leaders, so what good does it do us? We've got all these great presentation skills, we've got all these speaking skills, and Toastmasters, mainly, people think of it as a speaking improvement program. But it also has this great other supplemental book, our competent leader book, which helps us not just become leaders, which, yeah, we all like to become leaders, but I, I prefer to consider that it's a team building book, where we all came here today, we took on roles, somebody else couldn't do it, what do we do? We, we volunteer to meet that role. That's what we would do in the real world. Patrick, your example was awesome. You knew you were going to have to help host an event. Practicing in here, we're good to be going out there so when somebody gives us that kind of role we can assume it with a little bit more confidence than if we were just going in it cold. This is where our competent leader book comes in. But let me tell you, as long as I have been in Toastmasters and known about it, do you know that I was of the mind that I was going to finish one book before I started the other? So imagine my shock like three weeks ago when I saw I could have already had my competent leader. If you look at your book, a lot of the roles you're taking today, Patrick, I'm, I'm evaluating you even though you didn't ask me so I can help you put it on one of your projects in your competent leader book, it's that easy. Most of the roles in here, timekeeper, evaluator, are in your competent leader book. So you could have, all this time, all these roles I've been doing, I could have already had them for credit. That's how easy it is. As well, it gives me practice to carry on into the real world. So, I've given you some of the examples. I'll counter, timer, grammarian. I mean, really, that is like one of the easiest, easiest. We just have to listen to Markdown, and it goes in our competent leader book. We get credit for it. You can look at your page. If you brought your book, look on page 55. It gives you other examples. And you, if you remember, unlike me today, to bring your CL book, it's that easy. You can ask somebody just on the fly. And if not, you can ask me as the VP of Education to evaluate you. If I'm not here, Beth will. Or if Beth and I happen to not be here one meeting, Martina, any of the members can evaluate you. The only thing is, is the VPE of Education, which is me, has to sign off on it. If you don't bring your book and you're like, oh, I have a role today, or just say you stepped in and took the role, just ask somebody, can you just evaluate me? 
email me the evaluation, whatever, just somehow get it in the book, have the VPE sign, which is me, and I will be more than happy to do that for you so you can get your credit. Distinguished Toastmaster. How many of y'all are interested in getting your, obtaining your Distinguished Toastmaster? Let me tell you, the people who didn't raise their hands, you're already working on it. You're already working on it because you have your competent communicator. I've already told you how easy it is to do your competent leader book. You're already working towards DTM. So let me give you an example. How many of you have given your, your how many of you have given your first speech? That's already the big one of the biggest steps to go get into DTM. Think about it. Who was mortified to give the first speech? I was. I still am. Every time I get in front of you guys, I know you don't see it, but I am so nervous. I didn't eat lunch for that reason. I get so nervous, I'm scared I'm gonna get really caught up one day and I'm just gonna go, whoa. And that, that feeling never goes away. And I didn't think that I would be interested in getting my DTM. But the more I look it over, and the books only get smaller the farther you go. Well, if you're going to get over the CC and the CL, the other books are just fly. Beth, what do you think, now that you've gotten into an advanced book? The, the I, I think the, the only difficult thing in the whole system is playing a role in, in district. That's and that's, that's the last thing that you do. Now um, the rest of it, it's it's just like the same things that we are doing right now. So it's just repeating in different ways. At first, if y'all were like me, you probably weren't interested at first because you thought it was going to be extremely difficult. But if you're already working in these two books, by the time you finish that speech book and you've assumed most of the roles that we've all played here today, you're already that much closer to being a DTM. It's not even that as complicated as most of us thought it was because of all the abbreviations, the CC, CL, ACB, ACS, ACG, it actually, those are harder to remember than it actually is to accomplish. And I think we're all in the mindset, we've got to do it now. We've got to do it within a year. Really, I think if we've said five to ten years, we're hopefully all going to be here and alive. And that's just another goal to work towards. But what were we going to do anyway? Like my, my grandma said, what were you going to do anyway, Miha, when I used to complain all the time and being in college, all this time, well, what else were you going to do that was much better? Mm-hmm. <laughs>